Hey, everybody. My name is Rob Banke. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Critical Spotlight. Today, we have Mateus Cook. Mateus, tell us a little bit about yourself and then also tell us about your more recent critical finding for one of Halborn's customers. Thank you, Rob. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mateus. I'm a lead security uh, offensive engineer at Halborn. And I would like to share this critical vulnerability that I found in one of the recent engagements. So it's basically a Rust smart contract uh, that we operate on Partitia blockchain and uh, they were developing a liquidity pool. So basically there was a big issue uh, when calculating uh, the correct amount of liquidity pools that would be minted to the participants. So Imagine a scenario where people can contribute two different types of tokens to a shared pool, and then in return, they can receive tokens that represent their share uh, of the pool. So we can call them LP tokens. The issue is that the system calculates how many pool tokens to give by simply adding up the amounts of the two tokens contributed. So token A amount plus token B amount. This method doesn't consider the actual value of each token, neither the decimal units for each token. So for instance, if one token is worth much less than the other, someone could contribute a large amount of the cheaper token and then get more pool tokens or LP tokens than they deserve, which isn't fair to the other participants, neither to the, to the protocol itself. Furthermore, when contributors add more tokens to the existing pool, there was another issue that the system calculates their shares uh, based only on the token they are adding without properly accounting for how much of the other token is needed uh, to keep the pool balanced. So this oversight allows people to manipulate their contributions to gain a bigger portion of the pool than they are entitled to, which can harm the other participants and also can lead the system to financial disadvantage. Wow, yeah, no, that is, I mean, it's an incredible finding. Um, I think what people really wanna know as well is um, when when you find things like this, like how, how do you find things like this? So can you tell us a little bit about your, your methodology for going about? Yes, of course. Here we have like extensive uh, knowledge of, you know, assessing DeFi protocols, AAM protocols, like we do that every day. We do know that there are some formulas like the constant product formula and the geometric mean that uh, you need to employ on those AMMs and those liquidity pools to make sure that you are providing a fair uh, contribution and you're receiving back a fair LP tokens. So basically we need to understand what formulas the protocol was using to calculate the LP tokens that would be minted back to the user and then understand why they were failing. And then we need to propose like the correct implementation. So for the first issue, which is the initial liquidity provision, where they were basically adding token A amount with token B amount to represent the total LP tokens. So this was vulnerable. The solution was using the geometric mean, which is basically a type of average that multiplies a set of positive numbers and then takes the root corresponding to the number of values. So for example, for two numbers, it's calculated as the square root of their product. Bringing that for liquidity pools and AMMs uh, using the geometric mean determine initial LP tokens will ensure a fair representation of each token value contribution by accounting for their proportional market values instead of only uh, summing token A with token B. Uh, so for this specific case, we suggested changing the lines of code that were related to the calculation of LP tokens to be minted to the user. And we suggested to use the geometric mean and provided uh, the correct uh, code implementation for that formula. So that's for the first, first issue. And uh, for the second issue in further liquidity provision, the issue was that the system was not accounting relative, relative values uh, for the tokens that are composing the LP uh, pool. So the issue is that when you were depositing, it was only considering the token that you were adding to the pool without considering the another token that also exists uh, in the pool. So 
when you add liquidity to an existing pool, you should calculate how much of the other token you need based on the current ratio of tokens in the pool. Uh, the LP tokens you receive will then match your share of what you have added compared to the total liquidity in the pool, ensuring your ownership is fair compared to the other participants as well. So uh, in the second case, we also recommended change the format that we're using to calculate the LP tokens to be minted and proposed uh, the correct one to be changed. I'd like to wrap these up with a more general question. It's a big question, but it, you know, so what can companies do to prevent writing bugs? I think that uh, companies like in general, they, they must submit like their code base for assessment. And then from that point, like the company could like decide whether they have like sufficient maturity to go live or not, if they need to adjust like some, you know, like important things in the code base. So definitely like having a security partner to analyze your code and, and just check like manually because like many of the vulnerabilities that we find here, like it's not about using automated tools. So it's all about like manual code review and understanding all the concepts behind AMMs, uh, DeFi protocols, how the calculations are made. Uh, because in this particular case, all the tests were were successful. So all the tests the team provided were working perfectly, but still there was an error, a critical one that would, you know, like give a lot of financial advantage for an attacker. So definitely like logical bugs, they do exist. Uh, they are really difficult to spot even for, you know, like skilled developers. So that's the reason you definitely need like, to, to get assessments and live regularly. Yeah, yeah it makes, makes a ton of sense. Definitely appreciate your time, Mateus. Thank you for walking us through all this. And thank you all for watching today's episode of Critical Spotlight. See you at the next one. Cheers.